Meet the Marang Gemma team, about to embark on one of the biggest challenges of their lives. The massive Murray Paddle 415. It's a test of strength, stamina and determination. 415 kilometres kayaking along the beautiful Murray River. Pretty much one of the, the youngest teams that have actually got a team in tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, which is pretty exciting. There's going to be about 120 paddlers on the water. The team of 12 high school students and the ground crew is about to have an intensive training in kayaking, problem solving and communication. So it's waking up at five or leaving at five? Get up at five and leave from the river at six. So you just have to figure out your sizes. Generous sponsors provided equipment, clothing and accommodation. Now it's all up to the paddlers. You don't get these with the life jackets either. Which is what we've previously spoken about. But our major sponsor um, was the Mima Bowling Club. So they gave us $10,000 plus purchased all these t-shirts we used to have. Food, drinks, water, cabins. Um, everything else you need. So um, this is obviously the Moe Marathon, so that's why they're on there. And we've got our team name. There are three kayaks. Each will carry a student and an adult in relays. Everyone turns up for an early start, in spite of getting little sleep due to excitement. There's a problem. The police officers, who were to join the team, haven't turned up. Finding out that we don't have any police paddlers has really set this whole thing <laughs> sideways because we've had to reassess everything, uh, reanalyze all the risks, do the, redo the risk assessment, um, and it's going to take its toll on our minimal amount of uh, adult su support paddlers. Hopefully, um, we get some other adult supporters in this today and um, I'll do my kilometres today. Super Chantelle and myself, um, that's most likely going to be that we do the full 84 k's today, um, which is going to be pretty hard on the body, especially given the fact we didn't train, <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's going to be a bit fun. Keen for a good start, a couple of boys have gone down to the boat ramp. You know, they're super keen because uh, we thought we'd lost them for a second there and um, given them a call and they're sitting down there ready to go. But there's confusion about where the starting line actually is. I think they've gone down to a boat ramp that they've previously used before and it doesn't seem to be the same one, so we're heading back to pick them back. Here, once the first lot go, you'll travel down to checkpoint two. If you are really tired, jump on the bus or you know, grab a towel, lay down on the stand, and the next point checkpoint have a sleep. Just before seven o'clock, we'll be calling everyone up. We'll get everyone in pretty much in a straight line. What are you? Last down. There's a starting pistol. Just bang. Here you go. Yeah, I'm Luke Egan, uh, Aboriginal liaison officer at Murray River Police. I've been setting up this program through the police and to work collaborative with our Aboriginal community. I'm going to try you with one. Yeah. And then you see how you go. Yeah. All right, you should be able to let it go and then just jump in and then I'll push you. Warren Parsons from the Denny Aboriginal Land Council. Yes, support worker for Luke. And um, yeah, it's been great. He's done some hard work getting us this far, and with support from Tisha from Yakima and uh, Chantel Barnes from Denny High School. She's done a great job with organising the kids. It's all new to everyone, so it's a good experience. We're all learning. Okay, just come up a little bit further, please. Yeah, that's it. Boys, good job. Yeah, no, we got very wet. And 
was, it was hard, wasn't it? Oh, it's hard. But it was good. Yeah. We just kept turning every bend hoping that someone was going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and Kobe kept telling us there were six bends for about the last two hours. I've got really sore legs in my bottom. In that chair? Nah. That's hard. Probably the I last hour was the toughest, wasn't it? Yeah, because we just had to keep like thinking we're going to get there. But when you're in sync, that was kind of nice. You could feel all of a sudden the power that just went through the water. Mm. But after 22 and a half kilometres, paddlers need a rest. So I'm just going to try and see if there's a way that someone else can fill my gap. Yeah, just so I, I don't Luke, have to do three runs to... in a row. Kobe Baxter steps up for his second leg back to back, teaming up with Angus. But there's a lot to learn on the first day, and steering these large kayaks isn't easy. Time is getting away. <laughs> Meanwhile, paddlers and support crew move on to the next checkpoint to top up the carbs and get ready for the next leg. I don't know what food for this trip. Oh yes, I lost my music bar. I don't know where that is. I actually ate what my music. So Amy, have you got all your snacks ready yeah, for the is. trip? Just a muesli bar. Oh, and a bowl of water. Cobe. Yeah. I wonder how Kobe is faring after paddling 40 kilometres this morning. I was alright. Are you sore at all? Yeah. After a gruelling first leg, Keisha has had a rest and some lunch. Kiara will be paddling with her for the third leg. Now it's her time to feel the pain. Oh yeah, Kiara, how are you feeling about it? you got to do it. Uh, oh, all right, pretty good. Yeah? Yep, excited. All right, <laughs> look forward to seeing you at the other end. Yes, maybe, if we make it. Uh, your arms hurt a lot. Oh, good on you. All right, I'll let you eat. The recent floods have really moved the riverbed around. Yeah, feeling it. That took it out of me. He's a bit of a uh, bit involved with it, actually. What, how, how so? Um, it's more mentally, more mentally, and then you do feel your body getting tired, and then you you think it's the next bend, and then you go, nah, it's not. But I started wearing in the shoulders and in the backside. Right. Yeah. But I did got one leg out of the way. That's right. the main thing. Yeah. Oh, no, I think they're going yellow. Yeah. Oh, right. So you still got still got enough juice for another leg. Yep. I'll go another one. The end one. All three kayaks finally on the water, the crew moves on to Thompson's Beach, where Destiny and Eden are getting ready to go again. Okay, so this is the last one, 26 k's, Thompson's Beach to Coke. So it's going to be a long one. Yeah, wish us luck. And what have you done so far today? Uh, we've done the, the 23. 23, and then we skipped 17 and 24. Yeah. Now we're doing this one. Great. Thanks. And how's your, how do you Muscles. rate your fitness? Oh, pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm getting guns. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this trip, we have some muscle. My goal is if I make it to the end, I get ice cream. So that's my goal. I just want to feed after this. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. Fill the tank again, eh? Yeah. 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 Fill the tank. Ready for tomorrow. Yeah. Again. Early morning, four o'clock. <laughs> four o'clock, wake up call. Yeah. Meanwhile, Kobe is getting ready for his third leg for the day. Our oh, arms are a bit sore, but we'll be right, I guess. And I notice that people talk about when they're coming into, you know, halfway through a, a leg, that there's a sort of a mental wall to push through too, you know? Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, it just makes you want to get out, but you've got to finish it anyways. If you get out, you've got nowhere to go. And so how do you push through that? Play music. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 
How's it feel? Good on the boat. It was good, just feeling very sore. Good on you. A long time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, not too bad. You can't, you look, you're, you're looking better than that last oh. leg, actually. Yeah. I she carried thinks. the tank. Is that what it is? We've learnt a lot about the Murray Marathon and just how difficult it is. And first time for New South Wales, and I think we've um, definitely <laughs> learning how not to do things before we <laughs> learn how to do things. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Here's our third crew coming in now. As Ian and Kobe navigated uh, the winding river, disaster it. struck. Their kayak <laughs> collided with a submerged uh, log, tearing a gaping hole in the hull. Oh. Water gushed in, forcing them to abandon the leg and signal for a tow from the safety boat following the fleet. Oh, I see. The place is a minefield out here. Right. It's, uh, between the, the sand dunes and the trees and all that sort of stuff, it's unbelievable. We tried to hop back in, but next minute, the second time we fell, Need help so then up. we had to swim to the uh, beach and clean it out, but then we realised there was a hole in it. Elsewhere, the physical exertion was taking its toll. I was starting to get like a bit claustrophobic that time. I was like, okay, I need to get out and stretch my legs. She's like, we're nearly there, because she was watching them on Snap uh, And every time she was upset, she didn't realise they were in a car, So because I kept moving. I copped a bag in the whole time. Our music died. Without anyone realising it, the checkpoint had closed off the event for the day. It had been a huge day, and everyone had stories to share. But there was a lot to do if they were to make it to the finish line tomorrow. Day one had brought some great lessons, but as they travelled back to camp, everyone wondered what tomorrow had in store for them. This is Uncle Cole. He's our elder around here, and I'll let you um, tell the story, huh? Did enjoy your trip down the river? Down the great Dungala, we called it, Murray River. Dungala. Oh, I don't know you, do know. Everyone's still there, you know. It's so great to see my people, to my mother's people. Moonakala and Kamragandja was very close, good neighbours, and we married in. Like, remember, when was my mother's country, and that's where I learnt my fiction and hunting skills with my uncles in the Wiro Forest, and I've done a lot of work there years ago. Now, now that the water's gone down, as you know, I was talking, we'll be going back into the forest because there'll be some, still some burials that'll be exposed. And what we have to do now is get them burials and put them back together and bring them out onto high ground and rebury them. So there's a lot of that that we have to do, you know. Yeah. It's day two. And with yesterday fresh in their minds, the big challenge is to tune the two kayaks and to smooth out their changeovers. Just what about the missing pedals and rock? Side square. Yeah. Tighten them up while this is rubbing straight. Yeah, we just need the two, two new bits of those webbing, because that boat's new. These boats are years, so I, I'm sure these just stayed in the shed for the last few years and it's just deteriorated. They've only got seven minutes, so they have to leave. Help appeared out of nowhere. The paddling community are very supportive of young people having a go. The students started to think about what to look for in a paddling partner. Perhaps someone they'd watched in the kayak, but didn't know very well. I mean, you really want to start, and as long as you're both together. The steering pedals had created lots of problems, but without spares, they'd have to improvise, push forward, and hope for the best. Four minutes until the start, four minutes. My name's Shannon, Shannon O'Brien. I'm the event director and have been for the last uh, seven years. And uh, we're extremely excited to have this team um, enter. It's just getting through early logistics, um, team sort of management, getting their transitions better, and that will save them an hour and a half of just shuffling. Being able to go through the same course as yesterday you know, ideally they get to the finish line um, as, a, as a group. Each checkpoint they got a little bit slower, um, getting boats onto the water a little bit slower. Everybody's talking about, you know, what can we all do more to make it happen because we know if we can do our jobs to make their life on water easy, their transitions and their overall logistics, 
it's going to be strong for, for years and years. So I contacted the Centre for Maritime Safety and we were able to get some kayaking life jackets for the team. I think it gives them a chance to realise how strong they are and the challenges of doing an event like this. So they've got to get up early, they've got to remember all their safety equipment, they've got to pack for a week, they've got to be away from home for a week. So they've got to realise that they're independent, they've got to be self-sufficient, they've got to work as a team. So there's lots of life skills that come with doing an event like this. One bend looks like another bend and you don't know, is the next bend the checkpoint? Am I there? Am I going to get there? And you just sort of have to zone out a little bit Think about something else, sing a song, have a chat to your team member about something else and try and make the, not about the event, not about the paddle, not about the lactic acid building up in your arms. You've got to make it about something else and push through. How far did we get? Um, we did, far, we went further than um, Destiny and Chantel went yesterday. We've got better time than them. We just get epic bragging rights now. Due to the floods, uh, the dynamics uh, of the river have changed significantly and there's been, um, as I understand, a fair bit of sand movement underneath us. Um, so I'm just keeping my eyes on the depth um, sensor with the sonar that's at the back of the boat to ensure that, uh, firstly, we've got enough water to be in and, second of all, I protect the engine um, and uh, the propeller from, from damage. Uh, so this is an opportunity to, to engage with young people uh, in, in a way that's away from that traditional policing role uh, to, to build those relationships, break down those barriers and help promote understanding uh, from the different sides of the equation. There's a few sandbars in areas that hasn't been, um, wouldn't ordinarily be there, so uh, it is a little, little bit of a challenge at the moment. Right, uh, that's some assistance required. From what we understand, the kids tipped the kayak and took on a bit of water. They managed to get themselves to the bank and thankfully um, kept a hold of all the parts because the actual steering mechanism had come off as well. So we just sort of tipped the water out. And between Angus and Destiny, they were able to fix it themselves. When you're out in the river on your own and there's not too many teams around, you tend to get that negative mindset about what the struggle ahead is. Um, so when things happen, it can also add to that. So to see those guys um, pick up the pieces and, and continue on is really positive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you jump out, we'll grab that. You go and recover. I'll give you that. I'll grab it. How's it going, Lee? Good. Yeah. That was hard. Yeah. How are you going, Ian? Good. Yeah. Painful. Great effort. Yeah. He's done well. He didn't quite get his driver's license. I had to nearly put him on the breath though four times because I thought he was It's a unique kind of strength that comes from connection to culture and country. That opportunity came in spending some time with Uncle Cole. Well, respect is, is, is cultural respect when you go to other people's area, you know. Like even when I go to my mother's area, I'd meet my aunties and I'd say, oh, look, I want to camp here. They knew I could not, and I'd say, could I camp over there? Could they might say, no, well, you can't camp there. There's a, 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 a shell midden there or a bit of a ceremonial ground, you know. So you showed respect. You didn't say, no, this is my mother's country. I'll camp where I want to. No. And every uh, mission you go to, like we're Aboriginal people, you must hark some. You know, it'd uh, be alright if I could fish here, or can I camp somewhere and they'd tell you. They wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to camp, or, you know, who are they? It's cultural respect, and that was a great thing, and it's still, we want to bring that back in with the young ones now. We ran into some steering trouble, and along the narrows, and uh, so we're hoping to get someone down and fix that for them so they can continue on. There's two straps on either yeah. side of the boat, oh, where the pedals are, um, and they've, they would be deteriorated, but they've now just snapped. You can't, they're not long enough to actually adjust. So without the pedals, and especially going through that quick water, you won't be able to do anything. I had to use my jawstring and my pants yesterday to make it through, so I think that's failed. Called on some old colleagues and hopefully they can help us out. Fingers crossed. I'll check you. Yeah, service. 
It seemed like it's still travelling. I just wanted to know how far we've got to go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they said they had a metre between, like, spaces to creep through because the trees were down and stuff. Yeah. So they just had to manoeuvre. I wonder how they felt like. Yeah, right. I wonder how they felt when they cruise along and they seen on tip outs. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, what was going, I don't know what was going through their mind. I, you know yeah. what would have been going through their mind? Was, oh, my phone, because yeah. no one <laughs> yeah. had the cases. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty far in front of everyone. We got a good start. Yeah, no, the said just start off well. Mm. So it was real bad headwind. Yeah, real bad. What was the current light? Pretty quick. Was it? Yeah, but not up here when it gets open. Shit, yeah, that's slow. That was really good, actually. A diff totally different experience to the first day. It was pretty intense, like the um, the river's moving pretty fast and the wind's picking up. So you kind of corner to corner, get a bit of a headwind. Um, but it was amazing. It was really good to get through. And um, Eden was awesome. She liked being 12. She's um, really stepped up and she just put her head down and paddled through. So we did really good time, apparently. Um, yeah, so on to the next one. And you're three days in of paddling, how are you going? Three days in, um, not too bad. That was a bit more exciting, I think. The, the different challenges that it was throwing was um, changing the monotony of a big wide open river for such long distances. So yeah, it was much better. I enjoyed today. Yeah. So not quite as long and uh, uh, not quite as demanding physically. Oh, it was physically demanding, but it was shorter time. So I think you knew that it was the end was coming and you could just sort of push yourself through. Um, the other days, all you could see ahead of you was big wide river. <laughs> so today, just to see another little bend, you just sort of were working it through bend to bend, which was good. And Eden and I just kind of said to each other, right our heads down and let's just get through this next one and see what happens at the next corner. It took some time to catch up with the boat that had lost steering. By now they were well behind the field and had to skip two stages. Myself and Angus were going to jump in at A and continue down to B. But with the troubles, by the time we got to B, that was closed, so we had to skip yeah. to C and continue on. They got Ben to do the adjustments, old mate who does the everything. He'll try and fix it up there, then they're going to bring it to this checkpoint. You guys will only have to do the one leg. We pulled into B, and the organiser said, Hey, have you heard from boat 38? We've lost them on the tracker, we can't see them. Yeah, they had it confused the red boat's gone the yellow boat's still coming there so yeah we can't find them on the tracker so we made contact with them and yellow was still oh, coming yeah. yeah so the safety boat caught up with you where the safety boat catch up two bends away with no help in sight ty and miley had persevered with crippled steering at times ty had put down the paddle so he could work the steering cables by hand yeah because yeah, i was legit steering like, it seems like it was shocking We've had two boats that we've taken parts off and to keep the other boat going. So now that we're in town, we're going to grab a few parts and fix up the steering and patch the hole. A fella's coming to patch a hole for us. And the lady was, well, the safety boat was really impressed with them. So they did really well. And you persevered. No, no, you can't just stand on the middle, like on the side and just wait for someone. Or... Yeah, you got to do something. That's what I said to him. He'll find a few more of those in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. You've got to improvise. Knee popped out. Oh, really? Oh, geez, that's painful. Yeah. How far back? Halfway. Oh, I can say. With Ian unable to operate the steering pedals, Keisha had to improvise. Got him to walk around and it popped back in each time. But in the end, it was the pedals, we thought. So I put him in the front, but his leg space was huge, so I had to squish in and not sit on the seat. Oh, um, really? Goodness. To, yeah, because I couldn't reach the pedals otherwise. Oh, good on you for getting here. Oh, we made it, and it wasn't as hard that time. Right, I'm a, bit not more, so... a bit more uh, current think, with you at, at the moment. Yeah, I think I'm slowly getting used to it. Yeah. Probably that's... should have trained. That's. <laughs> I think that's a lesser word. <laughs> Come yeah. on, mate, you do good. No, couldn't you just wait a little bit before you It'll be really quick. It's actually a lot easier than the uh, bigger ones that we did. Yeah, do you reckon? I reckon mm. today, I enjoyed today. So that wind was insane. Yeah. We got it together enough that they were going to be fine. Let's go, Come boys! On, boys.
Yeah. Him hard, Angus, make him work hard. <laughs> oh, I was they, so scared. <laughs> oh, you would be. Under, under yeah, and down we down. had to, we had to just t like tuck it under because we couldn't turn the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Toby and Kiara decided they'd just go. Under yeah, they just left us. Laid back and just went under and up they go again. They were being real competitive. <laughs> they just left everyone. Yeah. How'd you go? Knee hurt. Well done, mate. Right. You That's gonna take awesome. it? Oh, You've done well. Are you glad you two were together rather than you and Kiara say or something yeah, like that? Because if yeah. that happened, it would have been a big problem. Yeah. yeah. I think that, I, kept I think it's out. great that you two were together well, because you both. And they're all all of them are asking for a boy girl hookup because they all know that they can't do it on their own. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> and you're and you're out. Yeah, here. you're stranded. <laughs> like you were well, stranded. Like no one could say. Yes. That checkpoint was a lot easier because I knew the river landmarks, I knew where I was, so I could even speak to Angus Jeffrey and say, right, we've got three bends to go, and then he would get excited and put the hard yards in, so it became easy for both of us. It was a great morale boost to get to the finish line on day three. The paddling was getting easier. Yeah, I'll be walking around with my shirt off a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cold, it's too early, early and we're not allowed back in the box. Is that oh. recording? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Angus has his own blanket to himself. And it's it a is double. It's only 6 30 in the morning and it's freezing. We slept through. My name's Brady Cronin. I'm from uh, New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service. I just thought I'd, I'd chip in as I have a bit of a connection with the Daniloquin High School trainee students. They've been coming in to, to work every fortnight uh, along with their conservation and land management traineeship. Uh, and it's been great to, to get out and uh, learn just as much from them as, as they uh, they learn from us and we go out water bird surveying, we do frogs, turtles, fish and this is just a, another step to really build relationships with the boys and try and support them in their future going forward. So I'm going to be jumping in the boat today with Miley which I'm really excited for. We're going to be heading down from Moama Beach here uh, and really looking forward to it. It's going to be an awesome morning. With everything becoming easier, the crews found themselves enjoying the experience of gliding down the open river, taking in the stunning scenery and relishing the joy of the journey. Yeah, I think the program's been great to, to get Aboriginal youth to come out on country and to be able to just even just go down the river and, and connect and see what's happening. Miley and I were talking about birds and she was fascinated by different ones I had seen and then she was teaching me a few stories about how the water's flowing down and where it's fast and slow due to the pattern on the, the bank. So I think it's just amazing to have that intergenerational learning, to have the aunties and uncles here as well and then people like myself who are able to support and chip in. Wouldn't it be awesome if there was a relationship with parks, police, other agencies to support these youth, not only out here on the water, but as they travel through life. My name's Ben. I work with Shannon casually as a kayaking instructor. have done it for the last 10 years. But quite often you get crews that sometimes the support crew doesn't show up or running a little bit late, jump in, help out. Other times you get support crew who may not have learned to kayak. Um, definitely when you're beginning, if you can sort of Wrap your head around a few of the basics, helps a lot there, but there's nothing to say you can't just jump in the car and give it a go and eventually you'll find something that works for you. And you'll discover all of the things that I was telling the kids. Honestly, they've done a great job sticking with it. They always seem to come in with a smile or just have a smile five minutes after they've been off the water. So they're halfway there really, just with that attitude. And that's all it is. Had a rest day yesterday, but you back up for today, eh? Yeah. Good on you. You, you're feeling, uh, feeling, you know, a bit pumped? No, not really. 
Yeah, well prepared by the look of it. Yeah, I'm yeah, not planning on getting ready. burned again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get yeah. yourself all out. ready, so I'll put it nah. The boat went well, um, you yeah, know, probably went through pretty easy, so that's all good. Yeah, just try to give it your really. Trying to have fun out in the river. Would you do it again? Yeah, sure. 100%. Good on you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Easier or harder than the earlier ones that you've done? Easier. Like that? More than Oh, so you enjoyed it more? Yeah. Yes. Did you get to a stage where you were thinking, oh, how far am I? Are we there yet? Not really. Good on you. The paddlers and support crew were starting to relax. Some people doubted whether it could be done at all. Others never doubted the vision and the resolve to make it happen. Yeah, Paul Barnes is a sponsor. He's the CEO for the Mama Bowling Club. He's the one who granted us the money and he's uh, going to meet the kids tonight and um, he's even offered to pay for their dinner. <laughs> so that looks like your best one yet. Uh, yeah. Um, is that right? How did yeah. it go? Good. It was good. Um, you feel like you're, because it's been a challenge for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. What's changed? Uh, the stream of the river. It was a lot more, a lot more, what's the word? Steady flow. Yeah, it was a good flow of the river. Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of got in, in, in sort of a bit of sync with that, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Because we're looking at your stroking down and, uh, you know, yeah. people are commenting. They say, oh, you know, not only are your changeovers getting better, but uh, you're looking more comfortable in the yeah. water as well. It's good. Yeah, we were getting in a bit of a rhythm, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Yeah. Picking up a bit. Yeah, and so it's your second today, Brody? Yeah, second today. Yep, indeed. How's that, how's that uh, going? Oh, I think it was... Um, yeah, I think it was good. I was feeling pretty exhausted, but Amy kept me going. We both had a few, um, yeah, pick me up. So I think halfway through we had a drink of the drink bottle and then just kept pushing each other along. It was, um, it was good. I feel like once you get in a bit of a, bit of a rhythm, yeah, we were, we were away. So we thought we were nearly there, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we kept thinking. I had the watch tracking it. We kept thinking we were nearly there, nearly there, but um, yeah. We got there in the end. So. Yeah. The pressure was still on, particularly later in the day, to make it to the next checkpoint in time to swap crews and start the next leg before cut off time. <laughs> She wants to jump in anyway. She wants to jump in anyway. I'm in set. I'm in set. The wind was pushing us back. We were out of the competition. They said, they said you got eight minutes left to get back where you're out. Yeah, you better come off. It doesn't matter at the start, put whoever you want in. But if you know you've got two pairs going out at, let's say, checkpoint A, and you know one's a little bit slower than the other, just put them in whichever boat comes first. Yeah, yeah. Rather than if you put the slow one in the second one, it just gets further and further behind. Because the red one's maintained um, consistency throughout the whole thing, like yeah. there's been state, I can't. Don't smile, I know why it's that. But it, it sort of kept going and it hasn't it's been broken. It's been through the whole and, thing. Yeah. Okay. So we're we'll trying to Super keep... Stitching. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> At least we can get some numbers on the board. We'll have bloody horseshoes hanging off this tomorrow. Go <laughs> looking for four leaf clovers now. Yeah. Get started. Yeah. <laughs> one. All right. All right. There's a lot of young people are lost because their mum and dad might have passed away or I found out in the Koori courts. And they, they knew who they were, but they never had that connection. So I connect, I was 
blessed really coming from Cumberland. It was a big mission, and uh, I knew everyone, you know. Young women and men, they'd all, the women would come up and cry, young women and argue, and the young men would cut again because they had that connection again, that cultural connection. She hadn't ever had any education, but I was taught my elders once, my law, law people. A lot of people will say, I oh, don't go back, you've got to move forward, but I didn't. I always go back before I go forward. I never forget what my old people told me. And it's coming true now, you know. And, um, and a lot of people are saying to me, gee, Uncle Cole, that's great, you know. We forgot them things. I said, well, you don't. Because then there was our lawmen and their professors and scientists, you know. They told us everything. They told us about the river system. They told us about the animals. They told us how to live, how to survive on our country. Message on the front for you. Yeah. Put a message on the front. <laughs> it's the final day and a chance to put everything they've learnt over the last four days together. The red kayak is prepared and ready for launch, while the final tweaks are being made to the steering pedals of the yellow one. Back on shore, preparations are underway for the finishing ceremony at the end of the day. Now Amy also has a parent coming along. She was she put her hand up to paddle today, so we're going to put her in the white one. And Ty, would you mind going with her? You don't have to do anything. It's only just to come through the finish line with the crew flag. That's 200 metres. So we're only doing first and fourth. Um, two o'clock, so we've got free time. So. We finish this lot, we pull them out, we might go have some lunch together and then we'll go back out for a new start. Tuesday of this week I got involved, my daughter gave me a ring on uh, Sunday night and said Dad are you available to come, which I wasn't for the first couple of days. At any rate, I eventually got here on Tuesday to drive the bus, the kids from checkpoint to checkpoint. Well, the bus driver that was doing it wanted to paddle too, and they needed him. So then they rang me to see if I could do the job for them. From the start, it was a bit, uh, how do you do? But by the end of the week, they were all firing pretty well. So what is it you think they're getting out of an event like this? A lot of experience, uh, comradeship, um, you know, meeting different people. We've had that many good reports from the other paddlers saying what a good job these kids are doing. The three that have organised this have done a fantastic job Yeah, with all these kids. Had a few, few little teeth and problems here and there, but like everything, they've all come together at the end. Uh, well, congratulations on your big big paddle this morning. How yeah, was it? Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was pretty cruisy, but you know, we just sort of smashed through it. I reckon it was better to do it in the morning because it sort of just went easier by, you know, because it was the morning, I reckon. But if it was in the afternoon, it would have been tiring as, but... Other than that, I liked it. It was good. Yeah. What about you, Jasmine? Yeah, no, it was really good. Like, calm, not as hot, so, yeah. And so it's all over now. Yeah. What, what are you th thinking back over the back over the week? Was it... Oh, it was a good week actually. Met some new friends and yeah. Yeah, it was, so, it was something different. Eh? Like, I wouldn't expect to be doing this at all. If I'm being honest, but what would be the the top the top things that happened during the week for you, both? I reckon new connections, I was Yeah, that connection was with your the mob and everything. Yeah? That was good, yeah. And what about going forward? Would you would you take up an offer to do it again if it was right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I would, yeah. What, what would you do different next time? 
if anything. Mm. Sleep longer. <laughs> Actually go to bed. Yeah. So I think that's about yeah. it. No. And what about the training aspect of it? Uh, do you feel that you were well enough prepared or was that an issue or did things work out through the week? The first day was hard because, yeah, you had no idea what it would have been like. You would have just sort of thought it would be easy, but it's a lot harder than you expected, eh? But once you sort of got into the week, it was sort of easier. Sort of got the technique because all these other fellas I've been doing it for ages sort of just gave you tips and what to do and, you know, all this and that. So it was all right, I reckon, after a couple of days into it. Yeah. What about you, Destiny? Did you did you find you had the fitness to do it, or was, yeah. did you have to push through pain for it? Or I think it stuffed up my shoulder the second day, so that was annoying. And then uh, fourth day, done my toe, and then stood on the stick, so I was like all the pain all at once. So yeah, you, you do it all again, though. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Good on you guys. Great yeah, job. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. This event, what we find is. Every year, just amazing things go on. So it's very difficult to put your finger on one thing that makes it extraordinary. This has been pretty hard. I told you. It's been pretty hard for us as a small family business to get these things going and continue. Especially, you know, through this last few years, it's, uh, it, there were some tight moments. And uh, anyway, we, we, we battled through and we got here. The changing of this event for the last few years really made things, especially financially, really tough. The, uh, the money came in quite a few years ago. I got a call a few weeks ago. And it was from a big team an unexpected team and it was like a miracle it was a really good amount of money for an entry and we were able to draw on our resources of an event to help them to help us we were able to find boats we were able to find some additional funding so it alleviated their pressures and it helped with our pressures um, I just wanted to, to bring up some of the representatives of a new team from Daniloquin some indigenous youth and the local elders and also the, uh, the Daniloquin uh, police. So if I can have someone from Marang Tayema come up. Now Marang Tayema is a, a word from Wamba Wamba. And as you know, every year we love to, to introduce new indigenous words, whether it's Dungala, Nyerna, um, or, or some of the other, the Bayama. Um, Kumara Gunja, or the different words that we've learnt under our title of Connecting River People and Country. Now this is a word that means to find and to discover, and I know that this week this group definitely found and they discovered. They discovered mateship and hardship and they did it. They paddled and they paddled really well. Day one was tough and just got tougher but also easier. So thank you so much. Yeah, please come up and just accept this. I just want to thank everyone for bringing this, like letting us like come out and it was a good experience. And yeah, just very proud of everyone. And yeah, <laughs> it was a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit ashamed about yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to thank everyone. It was a new experience. I've never done it before. Good to get out and yeah. Yeah, and definitely we will come back. <laughs> I just want to thank all of you for helping out our kids and giving them a good advice on the way and helped a lot. And um, we'd like to be back. And it is very like family to us. Thank you. You young ones are gonna be a uh, Future. So we'd be telling lies if you come up and spoke to me and I just said, ah, you know. Mm. I've got to listen to you too. Listen to you too, you know. You, you, we mustn't forget what we were told by our elders. That's forever. We don't want to walk alone, we want to walk with you.